So in this video, I'm going to share with you a live sales call from start to finish. You're going to hear the prospect on the other line. and I'm going to share with you why I say the things that I say. And most importantly, I'm going to share with you exactly how I sell 45 to 50 policies every month with this sales framework with the one call close selling final expense over the phone. I want you to understand the things that I say. So I'm going to stop the film. You're going to listen to why I say the things. And most importantly, I'm going to teach you how to not hypnotize, but move people through the sales process so easily that you sell them. Wait to the end, I'm gonna share with you a few objection handling tips that I've used, and most importantly, I'm gonna share with you how I close the deal that'll allow you to make more money in this industry. I think this is gonna be one of the best trainings out there. I'm gonna share with you exact framework that helps me sell 40 grand, 50 grand of final expense every month that you now have access to, and it's gonna be a live call. Listen in, I hope this video brought you value, and make sure if you want more of this content, comment, like, and if you feel this was valuable, subscribe, reach out to me. I'm here to help you grow, and most importantly, I want you to win in this industry. Hope this helped, let's get it, keep selling, cheers. So what is going on guys? I want to share with you and walk you through um, the reason that I say the things that I say in a sales presentation. Right here, I'm going to share with you a client that I just sold. She's a senior who is looking for life insurance. I want to give you some context first of the lead, the information that I have, and most importantly, I'm going to break down. You're going to listen to this sales call and I'm going to share with you why I say the things to say and when to say the right things to help you become a better sales individual. So I helped the lady with scale. We were basically texting for her. She became a new lead. And all I knew is that she was looking for some life insurance and I have her beneficiary name. And basically I just texted her a few times back and forth here. And then I got her on the phone and I want to share with you how I start this conversation off to build some trust, build some rapport, but learn how calm, how collected and listen to my tonality on how I knew instantly in the first 30 seconds, this lady was going to be a sale. So I'm going to share with you and you're going to listen here make sure you listen very carefully. You're going to hear my voice, her voice. I'm going to break down you the whole presentation to the close. Let's get it. So, hello. My name is Gail. Yes, it hey, is. Gail. This is Peter. How you been? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I know we were kind of going back and forth here. I saw that you sent in this request here. You listed an officiary. Is that right, Gail? That's correct. Okay. Okay, so right there. So I saw, you know, we've been kind of going back and forth here, Miss Gail. So it's not like I'm calling her as a brand new lead. We were texting. So I saw that we we're going back and forth here, Miss Gail. You shows here you listed blank as the beneficiary. Is that correct? Get her up to speed and go right into it. Don't spend a lot of small time talking. Go right into the pitch. Okay, lovely. And you put down here that you uh, currently have some coverage now. Were you looking to add on to what you have, or are you just trying to find something that? No. I'm not so the question that I asked her next is: Do you already have some coverage? Or are you looking to add on to what you have, or are you just trying to find something? Them better and hear what she says. And it counts. So I have a term that's going to be going up to 140 a month. Um, oh, wow. Okay. So the value is right there in the call. I know right now if I can find her something, she's looking for a new option. She sounds like a really sweet lady. And if I can find her a good position and she trusts me, I think she's going to buy it for me. So here is her pain point. Um, yeah, I can't do that. It was 80. I'm going to be canceling it. It's through AARP. I was going to ask. Yeah, AARP. They've been probably raising those rates every five years on your right. It's yeah, it goes by your age, and I'm gonna uh -huh. turn 71. So yeah, and then it goes it's away after. Gotcha. And how much coverage was that? Like 10, 15,000? It, it was 50,000. So what I want to share here is kind of break down what her policy is, how much she's paying, gives me an idea what I can pitch. Also see what she had, how long she's had it, think about if she's going to be a good client. But most importantly, her biggest concern is she has a AARP term policy that's going to expire. Now I got to go ahead and communicate value to see what she's actually looking for. Okay, gotcha. But you're looking for, I'm assuming something that's going to be there for you forever like and it's not going to expire. Right. Okay. So basically she agrees early on the call, we're about... Um, one minute in that she's looking to cancel policy wants to find a whole life option that's going to be there for her to cover her burial expenses cool the beginning of every call in the first minute 30 seconds is establish why you guys are even having this conversation what is the reason you are now on the phone with this person lovely and are you just concerned with you just to have something for the burial expenses or are you just trying to leave something behind us shannon what's your what's your concern mostly burial and you know if there's a little bit extra that's fine but it's mostly and uh, you know to bury me and final expenses the final okay gotcha well appreciate you sharing that kind of how we work here gail is that uh, we specifically help seniors and we just help them find the most affordable and reduced plan statewide and something without a two-year waiting period so the way that we right. do this is i actually work with all 26 companies in the state and based off the medical profile that you're going to share with me uh, i'm going to go through and find you the most affordable plan with the most benefits and give you the cheapest price uh, price based off your age and your health 
Cool. So simple there, explaining how we work, how we help people. So Gail, what we're going to be doing is I work with all 26 companies. We're going to help you find the most affordable and reduced plan and also find something without that two-year waiting period. Find and communicate value early on in the call so they can feel like you can trust you. You can hear how fluid it is. I know what I'm talking about. There's no stuttering. It's a fluid motion of the sales process. She's building trust. She's starting to open up. But most importantly, she's just like, okay, cool. She's giving me yeses, which allows me to continue into the sales cycle. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And uh, you did fill out everything. It looks like you're very, very healthy. I appreciate you filling that out for me. It gives me a clear mm -hmm. idea. Just to confirm here, your birthday is uh, 520. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through her medical analysis. I'm not going to hold you guys up to this. I want to share with you kind of how I go ahead and pitch in this. But basically, you want to get clear understanding. The next thing you want to do is understand their age, their health, what their medications are. Um, what they're going through fin like financially, what their uh, medications and, and what they're current prescribed because you want to really put this person in the best position. And if you're a broker, you have the tools to, you should be contracted with the carriers. So making sure they can find them the best product that's going to put them in the best position and give them the most value um, is going to allow you to complete the sale. She needs the coverage. Now it's about finding the value that makes sense for her. So go through, ask the questions. I'm going to skip along here. Asking heart attack, strokes, cancers, any diabetes, any elevated sugars, any COPD, any oxygen, all of those underwriting questions will reveal which company you can put her with. And if you have the right softwares in place, you can actually find the best product for that person. So let's go into discovering the wire. Why does this person need coverage? 4171. Just so they can call me. It's Peter for you. And um, lastly, for you, no COVID in the past 30 days or any recent hospitalizations. No. Before we do that, I want to share with you that you do want to share with your credibility. It's really, really important that the person on the other line of the phone knows that you are who you are, um, that you can be trusted, and they can feel like they can trust you. You're not going to make a sale if you sound shaky, if you sound like you don't know what you're talking about, and you don't sound like you're credible and actually can you know, handle their financial information. And also – that if you're not a person who can communicate how you're going to pay out the claim because you're going to be the one that's going to be responsible for their death if something happens to them, you have to sound like an expert, and this is how you do it. Oh. Good. So all in all, you are in some pretty pretty great shape. Okay, perfect. Well, you know, before I jump into this, I do just want to give you a bit of my personal information. It's just extremely important to me with the way of the world that you would know who you're talking to today, okay? Okay. So my first and last name, let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready. It's Peter Roberts. P-E-R Roberts. And then okay. I want to give you my personal direct number here, Gail. Just you know, save this in your phone, give it to your loved ones. Just so they can call me, text okay. me, let me check up on you. It's just 443. Yeah, I'll stop it there. I'm going to give her my number. I'm also going to give her my NPN number. And I'm going to say, hey, Gail, if there's any other information that you would like me to send you, just know that I send that to you. It's really important to me, again, that you just know who you're talking to. Establish that credibility. And let's go into asking questions. The point of asking questions is to understand what their need is and my concept of make them feel dumb for not buying today. 41, okay. briefly here, you mentioned that you have that term policy, 50,000 is going to be going up on you. You're going to be dropping mm -hmm. that. But other than that, it just sounds like the, the burial expenses is all you're really worried about. Is that, yeah. is that about right? Okay. Mm -hmm. so you want the, sorry. And, you know, I guess what is your biggest concern when you drop that coverage and you no longer have more bear insurance? You just don't want to pass. Shannon, any any bills? What's your what's your worry? So ask the questions. Always ask questions on like, what are you worried about? Even though she told me she's looking for barrel insurance, you want her to continue to repeat what her problem is, what her concern is, because ultimately you're selling peace of mind. We gotta understand how big of a problem this is in their world. Well, um just to make and I'm going to pause there. You want them to literally say as much as possible. So ask a question and be quiet. Get them to open up to you. Sure, she could, like I said, pay for my final expenses, which would be the burial. And um, there's a house, but it's a reverse mortgage. So she has the opportunity to let them sell it or she can buy it for what's owed on it. Um, and I'm going to leave that up to her and her brother. Um, grandkids but yeah um other than that there isn't really any concerns as far as debt or anything the house is my biggest debt okay and that's gonna okay just the house there but you have that reverse mortgage which will protect her in a sense where she's not gonna have to pay for things right. you know, out of pocket if she doesn't have to right that. and then 
So after you explain it and she explains, you want to repeat back to her, her concern. It's a concept of mirroring. So it sounds like you want to go ahead and make sure that the house is not going to be an issue because you have the reverse mortgage and you just want to make sure that something happens to you. You're always getting the person to agree and, and confirm like, yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yes, yes, yes. And you just do that by being a good listener. Listen and explain back to them what their concerns are because they feel that you are that you're hearing them. And uh, so just mainly your final expenses just sound like your Watch. biggest worry and uh, you don't want to pass her that ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollar bill basically. Do I want what? You don't want to have to pass her that ten or fifteen thousand dollar funeral bill, correct? Right. Correct. So always ending the sentence with a correct or is that right? That gets them to know that you're hearing them. So Cool. We know why we're talking again. She knows what she's looking for. We know what her concerns are. Now we got to understand how big the concerns okay, actually you. And are going cool. to be. And then let's see here for any other concerns, we'll just make sure that final expenses are taken care of and making sure Shannon's all right. All right. Okay, great. And have you been, I guess since that ARP policy has been going up on you, have you been looking around for something to replace this for a while now or is this, this a recent yeah. conversation? So this is, you know, this is important to you, Miss. Miss Gail, it sounds like to me, you always want to ask them, have you been looking around for a while? It sounds like, you know, you want to make sure something happens to you. There's no burial. So you ask yourself, why haven't they got this taken care of? Why are they speaking to you right now? So what you do is ask them, what has their process been like of looking for? Oh, I've been looking, but I can't find anything comfortable and affordable. I've been looking. They're all trying to give me a two-year waiting period. I've been looking and I can't find anybody to trust. I've been looking and I don't know who to go with. These concerns are handling objections before they come up. And you do this by asking that question so you know what the objections are before they even present itself. And here's what she says. So it's obviously important. She needs a life insurance policy. She wants the coverage. Why haven't you got it yet? Here's her answer. You know, I've been going, and, and um, but I haven't really. Um, you're the first person I've actually talked to. Um, um, I've had, you know, emails and stuff, call us, and let it, you know, but... I yeah. did Globe Life, and but yeah. you only get like five thousand. You know, you say it's only nine ninety five a month, but you only get like five thousand dollars. And yeah. um, so, um, people will fill out forms. The thing is. The whole goal of this insurance business, people that you're selling to are looking around constantly. You just need to be the right person to sell them. For example, they're going to see the Globes. They're going to see the, the the 995 plans, the one that sounds so good to be true. And you as the expert need to understand what that actually is for the client so they can put them in the best position. Our goal is to represent them. And you got to understand when they're those 995 plans or those plans that have those cheap rates, they have two-year waiting periods. And you have to let the clients know. So here's how I responded to, oh, I was looking at the 995 plan. It's uh, whatever it was, not Gold Life, whatever that one is. They advertise on TV okay. all the time. Cool. Cool. Well, I don't and even know if that'll bury you anymore. But uh, yeah, and it's my it. unit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, so it's Colonial Pen, and they have that nine ninety five. Yeah. And uh -huh. uh, I, I work with them as well. I literally work with every company. I don't recommend them because right. number one, they give you a two year waiting period, right? And just to give you context, I can see everyone's rates in my insurance toolkits. So I can see what they're doing and what the benefits are. That's why I say I work with everyone because I can see what the rates are and I can see what that 995 plan will get them with such a small amount of units. And it's misleading the clients. We're here to serve them, put them in the best position and let them know what they could actually get, not what the internet tells them they could get. Get off the jump. And also uh -huh. it's, not, it's 995 per every unit. So 995 at your current. Yeah, I didn't understand uh -huh. that. At current, that that nine ninety five would only get you like six hundred and thirty some dollars of coverage, so it's not how it's mm -hmm. advertised. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So what I'm able to do here for you, and uh, so I am able to find you the cheapest rate statewide out of all the twenty six companies here, and just to confirm, you're looking for the whole life coverage where it won't expire; it'll be there for you into your right. hundred. Now, what I'm doing is I'm explaining the product to them. You want to make sure that you're selling the product that they want. You don't want to push a product onto them. You as the sales individual are trying to help guide them to make a decision, not force them to make a decision. So I explain it. So I'm explaining what the final expense product is. So you want something where the cost will never change. It'll be there for you forever and it will never expire. And also something without a two-year waiting period. Is that what you're looking for, Gail? Which again, is going to say yes. And this is the point. She's like, no, no, no. I want an IUL or I want a term policy. You're going to picture something she doesn't want and she's not going to buy. So making sure these check marks are always hit along the sales process will really, really help you. Years old, and then it's guaranteed to pay out. And uh, you don't want anything with that two-year waiting period, correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you planning for a cremation or are you going to kind of go that burial route? We're probably going cremation. I cremated my husband and, and um, I know it's cheaper. Yeah. 
and uh, it seems like most people are doing that now. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely more uh, economical for sure. It's um, mm -hmm. where they're with your cremation. Is it going to be a basic cremation? Or are you going to have like a viewing service as well that you're planning for? Probably just fortunately, your husband's it just. Okay, so now you're gonna be understanding what their needs are. You know, if you're trying to pitch someone burial insurance and they're only getting a cremation, which is three to five thousand dollars, don't pitch them a twenty thousand dollar option. This is why you gotta ask and understand what they're actually looking for. So if she's like, I'm looking for a burial, then you can pitch a ten, a fifteen, or twenty thousand. But for her, I asked her, what are you looking for? I'm looking for, she said I'm looking for a cremation. So which is three to four thousand dollars. Are you doing a basic cremation? A basic cremation. Here's how you have to be a product expert. Is three to four thousand dollars. Are you doing a casket, a service, any extra arrangements? No. A basic urn, basic cremation is super affordable, three to four thousand dollars, and that's what you're going to plan for. Everything after the three to four thousand is going to be left behind to the beneficiary. So you don't want to put pitch down a twenty, a thirty, thirty-five thousand dollar option if they're just looking for seven thousand of coverage or five thousand of coverage. You got to understand what their situation is, and again, um, digest and understand what they're looking for. The basic cremation. Okay, your unfortunately, your husband's cremation is probably like four thousand, three thousand dollars, something Listen, around there. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, it was under three thousand. Her, her, her husband's cremation was less than three thousand. If I would have told her right there, yeah, the average cremation is fifteen thousand dollars, and she found out that her husband's was three thousand that she just did uh, a few years ago, she's gonna be like, "What the heck's this guy doing? He's trying to sell me an expensive policy. He's trying to." What's going on here? Like, and it would not have made sense. So, always serving your client is super important. I think. Yeah. Back then, right. it's been 15 years, but um, yeah. What we're seeing is most people have like anywhere from like five to seven thousand, or maybe even ten thousand mm -hmm. to cover that. That's all you're really looking for. Um, if I can get a little bit of extra to give her some some money in her pocket to help her again, ask get her what on she's her looking feet for. or whatever she's going to do. I mean, um. She's on disability, mm -hmm. Social Security. She doesn't get a lot. So. so listen to this. Always listening and understand what is that situ situation like. So her daughter is the one that would be responsible if she passed away. Her daughter's on disability. Her daughter is not in a good financial position. And if she doesn't have the life insurance, her daughter has to now find a way to pay for her burial. So this is the need is just expanding. The value is growing. And listen how I respond. Oh. For her to go out even just to rent a place and stuff and um right. she'd be okay so making sure that your daughter really is taken care of if possible that would be important yeah. to you because it sounds like it'd be tough mm -hmm. for her to come out of pocket for this if you didn't have it correct? right okay correct, correct. Getting the yes and then um good and we work with a lot of individuals on the scale who are on fixed income social security now what you need to do is you need to find out how much money they make this is important on the options you pick. This is important on which carriers you write. Some carriers will not take a direct express card. So here's why you need to ask how you get your money, what is your money, and where is it going? You're a disability, so we've got to make sure we can find something that does fit the budget. Uh, what would you right. say your approximate monthly income is? My income is... Over two grand. Decent income for a social security okay. individual. And some companies here will give you an additional 10% discount. Does that go into a checking account or does that go into like a card? Where does it go? goes into my checking account. Okay, good. Well, I got some good news here for you. Uh, out of all 26 companies here in the state, the company that will give you uh, the cheapest rate and also... Uh -huh. Okay, so now what I do now is you just pitch the option. So by now, you're setting it all up. You know the need there. And I found the company. I'm going to picture this company. I explained the value. This company is going to give the cheapest. It really is for her age and her health. We'll give her the cheapest rate. It'll be the most affordable for her. Will not make her wait two years. And it's going to be there to cover her burial expenses. This is the best company for her, hands down. I'm contracted with them, so I'm going to pitch that to her. Um, so this is what I did. I just picked the company. I explained what they do, their benefits, the whole life coverage. And here's how I go into, um, I guess, pitching the options of um, the the five, the, sorry, the seven, the 10, and the 15. So with the cremation, I did picture a, five, a seven, a, a 10, and a 15, and I even downsold her. Um, just because you always want to serve the clients and put them in the best positions, it makes sure it's comfortable for them. So let me go uh, show you with you how I pitched those three options. Three options for you. Uh, they have a three options for you. Uh, they have a okay. basic seven seven thousand is like their starter plan. They have a seven thousand starter plan and a fifteen thousand dollar option and a fifteen. You always go up or down, structured based off your mm -hmm. budget. Basically, uh, at your age seventy, the seven seven thousand is probably what I would recommend to you. Seven thousand would cover your cremation. That three to four thousand goes to that cremation. It also will adjust for some inflation in the future, assuming mm -hmm. that cost to go up, as you know, inflation's kind of heating up here. Um, and just really make sure that your daughter or or Shannon never has to come out of pocket for that. 
that seven thousand right. dollars coverage for you statewide to be the cheapest would be forty two dollars and eight cents forty two dollars and eight cents Mm -hmm. Middle option, Middle option. 10,000 is kind of where you're going to start leaving her some, some money behind. You could really uh, leave about four to $5,000 left over with the 10,000. Probably the most common mm -hmm. plan that seniors go with. Uh, the $10,000 here, if you get approved, would be $58.25 for that 10,000. Okay. And then this scourge the third option. Listen. 15,000, this is kind of when you're going to be leaving about 10,000 or more left over to, to Shannon. If you really wanted to leave a little legacy here, a little bit of a gift. I don't know, Ms. Gill, if I'd recommend this for you, but the $15 okay. would be $85.20. Okay. But our biggest yeah, thing is... Can... Yeah, I'm thinking that 10000 sounds, you know... Um, would that be comfortable? Set... Now you're trying to go ahead and make yeah. sure she can afford this every okay. month. Well, you what know, I recommend yeah, I'm paying retention. 80 now, so... Um... Actually, it's going to save me a little bit to let us know if you can get it. But kind of fill me in here, Miss Miss Go. You can always add to it later down the road. You want to just try for the seven dollars. Okay. See, more I pause her here. I always want to make sure she's picking the best option for her. That's going to be comfortable. That's going to make sense for her. That's going to serve her. Because we're here to make sure that they can keep the policy and have the policy forever. Go for the ten thousand. What would be most comfortable and just give you the peace of mind that you're looking for? Um. Well, right now let's go with seven, I guess. And then, okay. like you said, I can increase it. Okay. You sure can. I'm going to be, if it's okay for you, I'm going to be checking up one. See, I could have sold her the 10000 She said she wanted it, but I just wanted to make sure she could, you know, downsell it to her and, and make sure she's in a really good spot. Every month for the first year, just sending you a text I'm going to be here for you. I just want you to know, Gail, apart from the life insurance, I want to be here for you and Shannon and actually serve you guys for the rest of the time. Is that, is that, is that okay if I reach out to you all? That's fine. Yeah. Okay. 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 So what we're Great. So what I did is then I moved her through the application. We did the application. I got her approved. She was super grateful. And we got her life insurance. So I hope this guy's helped you um, just really understand kind of um, how I pitch, how I sell. And the reason behind my words, um, this industry, if you can become good and you can actually help people and serve people, put them in the best position and you're smooth, it's the same sales process over and over and over again. And when you can get comfortable, when you can, you can feel she was comfortable with me. She liked me. We both had that vibe. There was an energy. She had the money. She had the need. She had the trust. And there was this massive amount of value where she needed the life insurance. She knew that I could be her guy and she thought I could you know, really, really serve her and take care of her. It was a no brainer. No objections on social, no objections on banking, no objection on anything, put her beneficiaries on, got her approved, and helped her become a client for life. So hope this helped you guys. Um, this is how I sell. Continue to sell. Um, we are Tuesday on the 9th. I have sold five policies in the past two days doing this part-time. So just want to share with you and lead from your front. Love you guys. If you want more of this, let me know. Comment below. Cheers and go crush.